we now saw that there was a new model of atom that was radically different from the Thomson's, Thomson's model of atom. Kind of it, it overthrew it and it had data, data and experiment to back it. But then, as it happens with all the truths, you do not accept it just blindly, right? So there were questions on the model of atom that he had proposed. So, so I'll not say that that they are normally studied under the drawbacks of of the model, drawbacks of the drawbacks of Rutherford's Rutherford's model of atom. I'll not say they were drawbacks. Rather, rather it was it was Rutherford who was not able to explain certain questions posed by the people. Okay. Now, to understand one of those questions, you will have to delve deep into a territory that perhaps you are not aware of right now. But let me kind of uh, try to make some sense out of it. And that will require the understanding of electromagnetic induction and and concepts of electromagnetic waves before we understand what what question was being asked so in a nutshell what he proposed was that there was a positive charge here concentrated in the center and it was it was surrounded by this is an orbit this is the path that an electron traces an electron traces this was this was what was called nucleus nucleus and and say these electrons are moving like that okay in in pretty much the same way as we discussed like our solar system now what happens we have studied this while studying the circular motion that we know that we know that we know that if something is moving in a circular motion okay a circular motion is an accelerated motion so just 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 follow me circular motion motion is 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 an accelerated motion okay why is it an accelerated motion okay why is it an accelerated motion why because you have got a velocity vector understand so currently the velocity is tangential to to this after some time say when it comes here the velocity vector is, is something like that it is it is tangential it will not kind of cut this okay so it is tangential understand this is tangential now this vector v1 and this vector v2 are not the same why because vectors have magnitude as well as direction correct a vector has both magnitude as well as direction and though the magnitude this is a uniform circular motion that means it is moving with a constant speed even then these vectors do not remain the same because their magnitudes their length are the same because their their speeds are the same but their direction has changed you can see that this is the direction of this and this is the direction of this do you see do, do we see that that the direction of direction of v2 and v2 and v1 are different they are not the same now what is an acceleration acceleration vector is given as v2 
minus v1 upon the time that you have taken say the time delta t that you have taken in traveling from from here to there get that and and this is this is average acceleration so there, there is an acceleration even though the speed is is constant and that that acceleration is there because the direction of the velocity is changing and velocity is a vector so we understand so so and you must have studied in kinematics that a instantaneous is nothing but dv by dt and and you will you will you will see in the video related to the kinematics that 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 acceleration is actually towards the center this acceleration is towards the center and this acceleration is called this is called a centri petal acceleration centri petal acceleration the name was coined by newton by newton and he he it was because it was center it means center seeking it seeks the center understand it seeks the center it tends to move towards the center okay so we understand this much that even when when something is moving at a constant speed in a circle a constant speed i am saying now that speed a constant speed has got an associated associated velocity vector at, at all points and at this point it is this at this point it is this and you see that it is changing at every point at every point every other point the moment it changes the position immediately the vector also changes its direction and that's why it it constitutes an accelerated accelerated motion and the acceleration value okay this 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 acceleration is is equal to v upon the radius r and is directed inwards so let this be a unit vector that is directed towards the center so far so good we understand this much now if and, and 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 hold on this is not a mass this is an electron that is moving so this is a charge that is moving right now a moving charge constitutes a current so the second tenet of this is this a, a moving moving charge implies current at the moment there is current by byard servert law byard servert law there has to be a magnetism magnetic field due to that okay okay now the trouble is that this moving charge is an accelerated charge this is an accelerated charge and this accelerated charge leads to a varying current get that a varying current leads to a varying magnetic field a varying magnetic field and had it stopped there there was no trouble the trouble is that a varying magnetic field
actually creates an electric field which recreates the current so varying current leads to a varying magnetic field and a varying magnetic field leads to a varying electric field varying electric field and this is as i said in class 11th whenever we talk of of, of one word it is a chapter this is the chapter of electromagnetic induction faraday's law of electromagnetic induction this is called faraday's day's law of of this stands for electromagnetic magnetic induction as long as the charge was moving in a uniform fashion without acceleration there was no problem it constituted a current that was constant which created a magnetic field which was again constant so if this charge that means if this charge was was moving with a constant velocity the, the current would have been a constant this field would have been a constant the whole trouble came in just because this charge got accelerated so so the charge got accelerated instead of this thing constant it became varying instead of this varying due to this varying this became varying instead of this being constant and this varying thing actually creates the electric field back and hence the current so what happens an accelerated charge actually creates so 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 accelerated charge due to this phenomena happening here this whole thing that i am talking about due to this whole thing Due to, due to this whole thing what happens is that it creates a it creates a it creates a self sustained oscillation okay so it it creates it it creates it creates a self sustained oscillation it kind of creates so and and accelerated an accelerated charge creates a self sustaining sustaining oscillation or osc hold on let me let me erase this oscillation of oscillation of electric and magnetic fields and magnetic fields okay self sustaining oscillation of electric and magnetic fields and this is called called an electro 
magnetic magnetic wave okay as i again said there is another chapter based on electromagnetic wave class 12 okay it was maxwell who was able to to predict this and it was later tested by hertz and marconi and and all the all the communication that you are using your mobile communication your microwave communication they are all an electromagnetic wave and it travels at the speed of light travels at the speed of light which is which is what 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second right It travels at the speed of three to ten to the power eight meter per second, and 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 it that is the first thing, and it carries carries energy as well as momentum, as well as momentum. Okay. So so in a nutshell, what happens? we are just trying to say this after you have understood what i am trying to imply we are just trying to say that electrons in in circular motion in circular motion should radiate electromagnetic waves okay e and w electromagnetic waves and since electromagnetic waves carry energy that much energy should be deducted from these electrons correct so 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 and electrons are having energy by virtue of their kinetic energy so as they carry energy and and uh, the electromagnetic wave is radiating that so so energy of electrons should energy of electrons should go down reduce right okay that should reduce now that should lead to the velocity of electrons getting reduced and if it slows down then electrons will get attracted towards the nucleus electrons attracted to the nucleus to the nucleus because it was its speed that was sustaining the movement and gradually what should happen the electron here should slow down and kind of gradually start slowing down and 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 should spiral down to the nucleus correct so electron spirals down to the nucleus to the nucleus and that's the end of the electrons correct it goes and sticks there because it's a positively charged thing and and has the capacity of holding the electron with itself so atom as we know as proposed by rutherford should not exist okay so so this was the contention the first contention that's why i am not saying this is the drawback of the model rather it was the inability of rutherford to answer this question that was leading to the there, there was no no drawback in the model as we see that that model is absolutely correct okay but but this was pointed as the first drawback that an atom as an atom as predicted by rutherford by rutherford should not exist should not exist because the electrons should spiral into the nucleus to 
the first convention. Okay. That was the first draw paradigm. Understand? So, so I should label this as the first drawback of of the Ford's model. Okay. Now there was another thing. Another drawback was what people asked him was, do you mean to say? Do you mean to say that there is a positively charged nucleus here? And you mean to say that electrons are revolving around the nucleus like that. Okay, this is an electron. This has protons. Let's say this has a charge plus Q. Okay. Now According to the Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law, two charges, two charges Q1, Q1, Q1 and Q2, separated by a distance R, experience a force F equal to 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 K which is a universal constant into the product of the charges upon the square of the distance between them okay pretty much on on the on the same lines as two masses separated by a, a, a distance R was said to be exerting a force of of g which is the universal gravitational constant which is the universal gravitational constant divided by r square okay the only difference is the magnitude of the value k k here takes a value of of 9 into 10 to the power 9 okay instead of, of the value of capital G which was 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 11 right so so this is the value and and what was asked by people was that that this is the force of attraction fine so so my force of attraction here will become what my force of attraction will become Q into E into K upon r square okay this is this is the electrostatic force of attraction then how is it being offset okay it is being offset this this thing is forming the centripetal acceleration so this should be equal to m v square upon r okay where V is the velocity of this electron, the magnitude of the velocity. You can go back to the circular motion chapter and, and see the video to understand what is happening here. But, but this is what the centripetal acceleration is and that acceleration is being provided by this electrostatic force of attraction. Now that brings us an interesting thing. This is equal to this. So I have got an equation involving V and R. You see that? I have this R square comes here or, or maybe this R goes there so you get K Q E upon R is equal to M V square correct now what does this connote what does it mean it means that I can make my R whatever I want no I let us say ask my electron to revolve here who stops me from doing that correct now the moment i ask it to revolve at this point corresponding to this r i'll get some v say, say i i call this r2 so corresponding to this r2 i'll get some v 
that we will be more than this understand that so 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 this is for for this r for the corresponding value of of k q e upon r2 square is equal to m v2 square i say i say that i let my electron stand here at r2 so that corresponding value of velocity is v2 get that okay now since you are not telling me any any kind of restriction on this does it mean that the electron can is free to roam anywhere at any radial distance from the center of the nucleus that means the atomic size that you are predicting is variable so what was the second second drawback the second drawback was that the the size of the atom was not predicted was not predicted according to this model by the classical theory that we are aware of till now the electron was free to roam anywhere that means for the same element the size of one atom if if it is if it is roaming at a distance r2 it means the size of the atom atom is less and this atom is also stable apart from the the electromagnetic radiation that we just just saw just forget it suppose suppose uh, that is excluded because the atom is stable somehow that is happening so somehow it is stable so that means in one atom it should be at at a distance r in some other atom it could be moving at a distance r2 in some other atom it could still be moving moving at a distance at a distance say r3 happily at a faster velocity okay and still be be stable so for the same atom you might have different sizes and hence you are saying that the all the atoms are not identical meaning that all the all the atoms are not identical do we get that and that was serious contention correct apart from this there was a third contention a very valid contention and which was this it comes from the first contention that was there the first contention so so i'm talking about the third contention the first contention was that it is spiraled down right now this relates to again something that that constitutes another whole chapter of chemistry that that talks about the emission spectrum that atoms have a unique a unique and discrete emission spectrum emission and absorption spectrum okay okay now let's again try to understand what what it means there is a nucleus positively charged and i i'll go into this more elaborately in the later videos but but for now you just try to understand it actually comes from both the first and second objection it follows from there 
there is an electron here okay and there is an electron here and there is an electron here okay or, or, or say or say there, there are no electrons here there's no electron here now what happens this happens this electron if it if it receives an electromagnetic radiation if it re receives an electromagnetic wave okay and and electromagnetic wave each wave has is is uh, electromagnetic wave has a lot of photons that is photons that are responsible for ejection of an electron and each photon has an energy equal to h nu okay then what happens this electron gets kicked up and may come to come to this shell here let us say this electron is is busy rotating somewhere else here okay in this shell but this will get kicked to this shell okay and some other electron here may may absorb some other electromagnetic wave here and may get get kicked to this okay now you understand the energy that was required say e1 say say this energy is equal to e1 i i'll i'll soon show in later videos that that this this energy how is it represented and so so this energy e1 and this energy e2 if if this was new 1 and this was new 2 so what would happen is is whenever i i do that this this photon will get completely annihilated absorbed and there will be a transition of this electron from here to here and here to here and then uh, okay and here to here and and then also after it has come here then to there okay now it was seen that for a particular atom this new was all new one was always a constant understand what does it mean it means that this energy difference is also a constant that means e is a, e1 is a constant okay that means and if and it was found that new 2 was also a constant if new 2 was a constant it means that e2 was also a constant now what does it mean it means that the this distance the the distances between the shells and hence the distance of this these shells from the nucleus was unique the our very second contention according to rutherford was that we could be moving anywhere but this experiment the emission the, the, this is called an absorption spectrum because you are absorbing the absorbing these right so so if you shine a light of of frequency this much you will find the light going blank or the intensity going down because so many photons have been absorbed in in kicking these electrons here one electron one photon okay one photon gets consumed one electron gets kicked up and and what do you find you find that 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 frequency is missing from your from your incoming radiation that's why it is called an absorption spectrum now while coming back now the moment it goes there it has a tendency to come back so so this thing after it has gone there it comes back and releases exactly the same amount of energy so 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 h nu 1 is equal to e1 and, and this this also has a tendency to fall down and this also releases this so you will find out of nowhere light being produced just because of transition of the electrons from a higher energy level to a lower energy level understand this is called emission spectrum so so this was called absorption spectrum this is called absorption spectrum and this is called emission spectrum because it is emitting the the photons 
this is called absorption because it is absorbing the photons here it is emitting the photons understand now these lines you you get it on a on a spectrometer you get discrete lines on a spectrometer and these lines were always fixed okay how is that happening what is making them stay at exactly the same distance in all atoms that was the third contention and this contention is born out of out of the earlier two contentions okay so 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 this was not explained they have a unique emission and absorption spectrum and that in nutshell was what was holding back people from accepting the rutherford's ford's atomic model and you'll soon see that there is a knight in shining armor who jumps in he's called means bohr he comes in and resolves all the three disputes and paves the way for rutherford to get a nobel and in the process lands a nobel for himself as well okay so these controversies led to two nobels for the same thing 